when I wrote my first book, I had no idea that I'm writing it. I had no idea that I'm writing a book. I was in uh, Akonuk. Um, was Which is the title? What's the title? Hearing Visions, Seeing Voices. When I wrote Hearing Visions, Seeing Voices, when I started, I had no idea that I'm writing a book. And therefore, that's why I, get, I always say my belief is books write themselves. So you get pregnant with a book. And then uh, when it's ready to be birthed, it comes out. And that's how it happened. I was in Akonuk. I wrote for the whole night. Uh, listening to the temptations. My second book was uh, Kanga and the Kangaroo Court, Reflections on the Rape Trial of Jacob Zuma, which I um, uh, published in 2007. I released in 2007. And from then, my life went on a down spiral. What's your relationship with that title? Because it almost messed up your life. I haven't read that book. I have not read that book. Um... I think I think I'll be able to read it at some point. There's, if I want to rewrite, if I want to revise, if I want to release revised edition next year, then it means I'm going to have to read it. Does it mean you are healing or you haven't healed yet? Uh, uh, healing is a process. Uh, I don't think that you can say I have healed. I think what you can say is uh, what changes is your relationship with your trauma or your wound. The wound does not necessarily go away because even when you have a scar, you have something that reminds you that, you know, something hurt you here. But if you're, you, you, you have not healed psychologically and you see that scar, it, it, this is, it triggers you. I mean, the word that people use quite a lot is that it's triggering and uh, the scar will trigger you. But then... But are you triggered? I'm not triggered. But what is amazing is that there's moments where I break down. I'll be in a meeting. I'll be talking about something that is completely uh, unrelated to the book. And then maybe somebody asks me a question about how did you cope? And then out of the blue, I just cry. And uh, that's, that's a trigger. It is a trigger. You know, I cry. And, and I remember saying to uh, my sister, uh, it means that this wound has been, was deep. Because even when I think that I have dealt with it, uh, there's always something that triggers me. I'm going to ask you something that I know a lot of people want to know. When you see Jacob Zuma on TV, how do you feel? Do you condition yourself to feel blasé about it? Or no. Do you, are you deliberate in your feelings that you're I'm feeling? I'm so deliberate in my feelings uh, about him. I don't feel, I don't feel anything. I don't hate him. Uh, I don't hate him. But he doesn't trigger me. He amuses me. Uh, he amuses me. But also the one thing I should say about him is that one thing that he does that we can all learn from, whether he messes up or not, he sticks to his script. You know, he's, he's the one person who sticks to, to his script. Uh, in the messing up. Um, that's what he does. So, um, I, I'm going to say this. I haven't said it before. I, I hope I get to meet him. I hope I get to meet him. And what would you say to him? I don't know. I don't know. I just want to meet him. Um, and see what happens. And if you don't, do you think it, you will have unfinished business? No. It's not that important in my life. It would just be interesting. It will be just an exciting thing to do, you know, uh, but uh, my business is not tied to him at all. But that was not your last book, right? Yes. And then after that, I wrote a collection of uh, poetry in Setswana and English called Sisesedi, Will Wind. And then I wrote... Uh, oh, that's what Sisesedi is yeah, in English. Yeah, Will Wind. Stick with me. And uh, and then I also twenty seventeen I released a collection of essays in Africa on on African spirituality, politics, and feminism. It's called Reweaving the Soul of the Nation, uh, which which uh, was self published and it did very well. So next, uh, I still owe you for that book actually. Oh, oh pay my money, pay back their money. Uh, 
so and now in a week or two i'll be uh releasing a package of four books some of them have been released before um it's reweaving the soul of the nation it's a and then there's another one called uh, find your star and leave your purpose that one is kind of uh, outlining spiritual lessons that i have learned from my aunt and then the last one is uh uh Street Lindava, which is a collection of short stories inspired by my birth. Please say the title again. It's it's straight. I fully rule. It's straight. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So inspiration from Brenda Fassi from her life. Her, her insubordinate nature. You know, she is a, she is a woman who came to the space long before her time and uh i think she left but i don't think that we understand we understand her deeply you know so i get excited uh when and uh, women particularly became become insubordinate i i one of the things that i really love is people who break the rules or uh, who turn who turn the rules on on their head so brenda fassi was like an expert in that no, she she was a completely uh, she a master of insubordination.